Welcome to our new video series about historical software failures and what we can learn from them from a software engineering and testing perspective. As we rely more and more on software to perform critical tasks, it's crucial to understand the mistakes of the past and how they can inform our approach to software testing today. In this series, we'll delve into some of the most infamous software failures of the past and explore the technical, cultural, and organizational factors that contributed to them. We'll discuss how these failures were ultimately resolved and what lessons we can take away from them to improve our testing strategies and prevent similar issues in the future. Whether you're a software tester, developer, project manager, or simply interested in the history of technology, this series will offer some insights into the importance of rigorous testing and quality assurance in software development. So join us as we explore the world of historical software failures and what they can teach us about testing today. In this video, we will be discussing the failure of the Patriot missile during the Gulf War in 1991. The Patriot missile defense system played a crucial role in the US military strategy during the conflict, as it was intended to intercept incoming missiles. Originally developed in the 1960s as a means of protecting Europe against Soviet aircraft and missiles, the system was later modified in the 1980s to serve as a defense against short-range ballistic missiles like the Scud missile used by Iraq in the Gulf War. Over time, the system underwent several upgrades, including an onboard radar in 2002. So the Patriot was designed to be mobile and operate for short periods to avoid detection. Equipped with a 90 kg high explosive warhead that detonated through a proximity fuse, the Patriot missile was intended to fly straight towards an incoming missile and explode at the nearest approach point. So the resulting explosion would either destroy the incoming missile with shrapnel or deflect it, of course, so that it would miss the target. So in a Patriot battery, the engagement control station, ECS, was the only manned station manned by three operators. It communicated with the launcher, other Patriot batteries, and higher command headquarters while controlling all the launchers in the battery. So the ECS had two consoles and a communication station with three radio relay terminals and was linked to the weapon control computer, launchers, and radar. And then the phased array radar mounted on a trailer. It was carried out search, target de detection, tracking identification, missile tracking and guidance, and electronic counter countermeasurements functions. It had a range of up to 100 kilometers and could track up to 100 targets, providing missile guidance data for up to nine missiles. The radar system had three modes, automatic, semi-automatic, and manual. It depended heavily on the automatic mode as an incoming missile could travel at approximately one mile every second, Mach 5, and be up to 80 kilometers away when detected. So the Patriot missile system began by using its ground-based radar to find, identify, and track targets. Once a target was identified, the ECS calculated an initial heading for the Patriot missile, downloaded the initial guidance information to the missile, and launched it. After launch, the missile was acquired by the radar, and the Patriot's computer guided the missile towards the incoming target. Upon approach, the proximity fuse detonated the high-explosive warhead, destroying or deflecting the incoming missile. So this significant shift caused the Patriot to search for the incoming missile in the wrong location, leading it to classify the SCUD as a false alarm and ignore it. The underlying cause of the failure was a software flow in the Patriot system clock. The system was designed to track and intercept incoming missiles based on their position and trajectory, but the clock will gradually lose ac accuracy over time, causing the system to miscalculate the position of the incoming missile. This error, when multiplied by the large number giving the time in tenths of a second, led to a significant error um, when the Patriot battery had been up um, to 100 hours. This caused the system to miss the incoming missile, which was traveling too fast to be tracked by the system's range gate. Ironically, um, the fact that the bad time calculation had been improved in some parts of the code, but not all, contributed to the problem by preventing inaccuracy from canceling out. The investigation report states that the range gate's prediction of where the SCUD will next appear is, is a function of the SCUD known velocity and the time of the last radar detection. So the velocity is a real number that can be expressed as a whole number and a decimal. 
and time is kept continuously by the system internal clock in tens of seconds, but it's expressed as an integer or a whole number. So the longer the system has been running, the larger the number representing time. To predict where the SCUD will next appear, both time and velocity must be expressed as real numbers. Because of the way the Patriot computer performs its calculation and the fact that its registers are only 24 bits long, the conversion of time from an integer to a real number cannot be any more precise than 24 bits. This conversion results in a loss of precision, causing a less accurate time calculation. So the effect of this inaccuracy of the range gates calculation is directly proportional to the target's velocity and the length of the system has been running. And then, because of this, performing the conversion after the Patriot has been running continuously for extended periods, periods causes the range gate to shift away from the center of the target, making it less likely that the target, in this case a SCUD, will be successfully intercepted. After assessing the impact of the error over time, the Israelis informed the US Patriot Project Office of the issue on February 11, 1991. Upon receiving this information, the programming team promptly began working on a solution, and within a few days the Patriot Project Office developed a software fix to correct the timing error and distribute it to the troops on February 16, 1991. Unfortunately, the software update did not arrive in Tahran in time for the attack on the barracks. Um, had the update arrived earlier, it might have saved lives. The problem of the Patriot missile system's failure to successfully intercept incoming missiles was a widespread issue. Originally designed as an antique aircraft weapon in the late 1970s, the system was later modified in the 1980s to defend against the short-range ballistic missiles. Prior to the Gulf War, the Patriot had not been tested in combat and during the war. It was found that the system had only successfully intercepted 1024 of the more than 80 Scud missiles launched. After conducting a 10-month investigation, the House Government Operations Subcommittee on Legislation and National Security found limited evidence to support the notion that the Patriot missile system had successfully intercepted more than a small number of SCUD missiles. The Patriot's eff efficacy was further questioned during the testimony before the House Committee on Government Operations. The Patriot missile failure during the Gulf War highlighted the importance of thoroughly testing and validating critical software systems before they are deployed in the field. It also underscored the need for ongoing monitoring and maintenance of this system to ensure that they remain effective over time. One of the key takeaways from this incident is that rigorous testing is essential for software that plays a critical role in safety. It is imperative to test the product in the environment where it will be utilized and in diverse conditions. So if a system is being redesigned for a new purpose, caution must be exercised to ensure that the new design is both safe and efficient. Moreover, clear communication between designers, developers and operators is crucial to ensure safe operation. When a software requires fixing, it should be repaired, repaired quickly and immediately deployed to the location where it is needed. The Patriot missile defense system experienced a software fault which was attributed to an aging related bug. In an article from 2007 by Michael Grotke and Kishore Trivedi titled Fighting Bugs, Remove, Retry, Replicate and Rejuvenate, proactive measures are suggested to address software aging and prevent failure occurrence rates from increasing over time. So restarting or rebooting would not be effective if the rate were constant. So however, software systems that run continuously for extended periods tend to show degraded performance and an increased failure occurrence rate. Therefore, rejuvenation is required to counteract this phenomenon and it should be timed optimally. Two main approaches to rejuvenation include the model-based and measurement-based techniques. Model-based approaches use these analytical models to determine the optimal time interval and dependability measures for rejuvenation policies, while measuring-based approaches periodically monitor system attributes that may show signs of software aging. This monitoring system can help detect aging-related failures and even software faults that were missed during development. In the case of the Patriot missile defense system, a, mon a modified def uh, version of the software was prepared and deployed after the incident, but it arrived days too late. Thus, it is important to address software aging proactively to prevent such incidents. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified on new videos. Thanks again for watching and don't forget, testing is a habit.